Hi, my name's Wood, age 28, and uh, I'm Australian, if you guys didn't know. I moved to the States like three years ago, and I left all of my video games in storage, and here they are. I've waited three years for these bad boys. These are the actual tubs that I packed them in like four years ago when I put them in storage. Which they aren't supposed to be in these, by the way, because the company that I did this through was supposed to put them into better shipping containers. Because they were being shipped overseas and these are like $10 tubs from Bunnings Warehouse. And uh, yeah, look what happened. They broke. One of the tubs completely fell apart and a lot of stuff is missing. It sucks, but yeah, it just sucks really. That's the end of that statement. This whole process getting all of this stuff here has been the worst thing I've ever had to go through. It was way harder than it should have been. In this video, I'm gonna go through this stuff. It's gonna be kind of like nostalgia lane for me because I haven't seen this stuff in so long. And then I'm gonna talk about why it was such a mess getting the stuff here, a little bit of story time as to how to not ship things from Australia, people. Don't use pack and send. Here's an anti-promotion for you. Stay the heck away from pack and send Bendigo. Calling you out right now, tweet you too. Here's what they did, okay? They took everything out itemized it, put it all back in, but realized to themselves, oh, we don't know where everything goes. It's fine. We'll just tape things to the side of the containers and wrap around them. That's what they did with this and look at it. I'm not even kidding you. My Game of Thrones book was taped to the side as well. Don't care about that all as much because I've seen the show and the book was pretty much the same and a little boring. Okay, we're gonna start with this tub right here because it's probably the lightest one out of the lot. Okay, all right, okay. Now, this one's kind of obvious. I can see through it. We have a ton of cords, which I'm gonna need. These are cords to the power glove, actually. So you can actually set that bad boy up on a TV. Here is my boxed Mega Drive. Kind of cool. Been a long time. Yeah, that's right. Mega Drive. Not Genesis. Mega Drive. Boxed Super Nintendo with the gorgeous blue buttons. Much better. I, I, I now realize that this is going to be probably the biggest pickups video. Well, I don't know that for sure. It's got to be one of the biggest, what can I call it? Biggest fan mail video. I'm kind of a fan of my own stuff. Some Mega Mans. We have some uh, 64 games in here. I didn't have many 64 games. I kind of just had what I wanted. Like Pod Racer, Stadium, Star Wars Shadow of the Empire, 007, F Zero X, the staples, the things that you have to have. Smash Bros, the staples. Mario Kart, Mega Drive 2 in box, complete, complete, mind you. Uh, Jet Force Gemini, that's actually a really underrated game. That's a hidden gem. If I was gonna do a hidden gem video, I don't know why there's a Thor in here. Okay, well that was that tub. Not not a bad start, not a bad start. Things better pick up pretty soon or else I'm gonna regret spending all that money. <laughs> See how heavy this one is? By far the heaviest tub out of all of them. They put it on top. Not even middle. Like, all right, Bendigo, I know you live in backwards Bendigo, but do you at least understand how weight distribution works? You put the heavy stuff on the bottom so the bottom one doesn't break into a million pieces like it did. Limited edition Assassin's Creed Rogue. Assassin's Creed Black Flag with the statue in it. I like that statue a lot. Why is it so heavy then? Harry Potter. <laughs> because of Harry Potter. Actually, my comic books are in this one. My Schism Collection, that was actually a really cool series. Scarlet Spider. My favorite Spider-Man series. Ugh, more comics. Hulk vs. Wolverine was really cool. I'm actually really excited for this. My Walking Dead books. Because I wasn't sure if I was going to get these bad boys back. And they're all in here. Yeah, this is full of like collector's edition books. I saw Super Nintendo games. And I guess it was just a few of them. Here's a prime example of Pack and Send Bendigo shipping quality. You should have seen the look on our faces when we saw the forklift wheeling it out. I love stuff like this, GameCube memory card inbox. So this is really awesome for me for so many reasons, but I haven't retro collected in so long because I honestly forgot what I had. And now I'm seeing it again. I'm like, oh yeah, that's like one big retro pickup. And now I can start collecting retro again now that I have better stock of all the things that I have. A couple of GameCubes for you. I like the purple one better. Oh, uh, an Xbox. Oh, it's got a PlayStation 3 in it. That doesn't go in there. We have a Virtual Boy stand. Oh, we have a Virtual Boy. Damn. I only got to play this guy one time before I uh, moved. This is actually, for those that have watched Retro Liberty, 
This was actually Ricky's Virtual Boy. I bought it for like 20 bucks with a game. It's actually a pretty good deal. I'm guessing the controller's in here too somewhere. Wreck-It Ralph on Blu-ray. We'll watch that later. Some boxes that got crushed. Thanks for repackaging it like a dope Bendigo. More like Bender Ho, am I right? Game Boy Advance. Wii. Some uh, Kingdom Hearts figures. Cords, boxes, boxes, cords, Gohan. Yeah, there's the uh, the Virtual Boy controller. I know there's an- yeah, there's two. There's another one. So far, not worth the money I paid. But it's- it's my stuff though, right? I can't just ab abandon it. It probably wasn't worth the shipping costs, but I couldn't just leave it there. And I couldn't just get rid of it. There's too much in here that I hold dear and have like sentimental value over. Like a lot of this I found during my Game Quest show when I started my YouTube channel. It holds a lot of meaning. There are some pretty rare gems in here somewhere. We haven't got to them yet. Okay, this one. This one's the pay dirt. You wanna have a look in here? <clears throat> this is gonna be the good one. Or one of the good ones. I haven't got to the Nintendo stuff yet. There is some in here. All right, got some Wii. I ain't gonna say it, we're all thinking it. All right, where to, where to start, where to begin? Where to go on this journey? This isn't cheap, but this last time I checked was going for about 150, and I think that might not even have been in its little case, and the case is perfect. I wanted to get this again for my collection because I had it when I was a kid. I really love a lot of the games that are on it, and they, they have a special place in my heart. This isn't mine from when I was a kid, but I went out and I got it again. I got it for like 20 bucks, I think, at some um, antique store. We have a inbox controller, pristine condition, I might say. I actually got that uh, here in Texas. We have Simon's Quest in a very nice box. I don't remember having a box that nice. Home Alone 2 in a very average box. That game sucks. Time Lord, actually, Time Lord and Road Warrior, really clean. I got these at Cash Converters in Australia. My first two ever boxed NES games I got when I started collecting. They were five dollars each. A little bit of Smash JT, uh, Smash TV in box. A sealed F Zero, uh, the uh, best of plays choice edition, which you can find sealed everywhere, or at least you could for a while. I'm not sure if you still can. Very beat up Banjo Kazooie and Mario 64. These have always been beat up. Here's a big boy. Final Fantasy in box. Actually, there was a map or something that went with this, or a st strategy guide. It's probably in that strategy guide box that we saw. Blades of Steel, one of my favorite NES games. Turtles, Rainbow Island, Bubble Bubble 2. Here's one that I was looking forward to getting again. My favorite NES game, Maniac Mansion. Earthworm Jim 2. Okay, that's the boxed Nintendo games. The rest of this container is a lot of boxed and loose Genesis games and Me Mega Drive games. My Mega Drive collection was actually... I lied, there's these two for Nintendo. My Mega Drive collection was actually pretty freaking great. Um, there is a lot in here. Can you get a shot of all of this? These are all my loose Genesis games. Uh, I don't know if any of them really stand out. Oh, Mega Man Wily Wars. There's one that stands out. That game is really expensive. I'm not even sure how expensive. Expensive enough that I'm going to put it there. Liberty or Die, that was loose, and someone told me that was expensive. I never really knew much about Genesis. I just kind of kept finding it. So yeah, Liberty or Death. And then underneath that layer, there's a ton, as I said, of box games. And I have a lot of really decent games, actually. Uh, Clay Fighter, uh, Toe Jam and Earl, Panic on Funkatron. I really like Rocket Knight Adventure, Ghost and Ghouls. Splatterhouse 3, love that game. Battle Chodes, I love some Battle Chodes. I actually had a Gunstar Heroes in box. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot, there is a lot. So that's my Mega Drive stuff. I think there's like 200 Mega Drive games in there all up with half of them being boxed. I say that is getting close to, hey, this was worth getting my stuff back <laughs> because there's, there's a decent amount of value in that tub. I think my biggest fear was that in my mind, my stuff was worth a lot more than I remembered it being. Like in my mind, it was like, cause this is all I had back then. Like I, I didn't have much money. I still don't have much money. I didn't have much money. And this was, this was it. This was my, this was my life. This was my collection. So it all had so much value to me and I would never want to lose it. And it was almost like no matter what, no matter what happened, I had to get it back. But in reality, was it really worth it? Like, was it really worth what I what I had valued in my mind? I got this in Florida. 
and Scott Squatch bet me that I wouldn't get it home in one piece. And I ended up getting it home in one piece, and now back to the States in one piece. My little uh, Rick from Walking Dead. I liked him. I'm gonna have to put him on a yeah, put him on my shelf somewhere. Uh, so I think this tub is going to be a uh, mixed bag of nuts. It looks like actually, I'm seeing Xbox 360. I had a really large 360 collection. Yeah, pretty much like if if there was a decent game that came out last generation and it was on 360, it's probably gonna be in one of these tubs. There's no point going through all of them, but Shadow of the Damned is one of my favorites. I really liked that game. We also have PS2 stuff, Kingdom Hearts, Final Fantasies. Maximo, a whole ton of PS2 stuff. This whole bottom layer is almost PS2. Uh, very boring Australian PS2, which didn't have any, for some reason, they all, every single PS2 game in PAL looked like this, if you didn't know. Oh, a game we never speak of, Toe Jam and L3. Uh, what else? Uh, boxed NES Advantage. I actually have another NES Advantage up on the shelf behind me. Oh, my Monkey Island Special Edition on 360. This whole bottom row, do you want to come in and get a... Get a good look at that. that oh, jeez. That whole bottom row is uh, Xbox games. I actually just went out and re-bought that because I got a guitar. I'm stupid. That's actually a hidden gem. I actually really enjoyed that game. I didn't think I was going to, but... Oh, Dreamcast. The big blue jewel case Dreamcast games, as well as some Mega CD games and uh, big, big boxy PlayStation 2, uh, PlayStation 1 games. Legend of Dragoon. Oh, this is one of my... This was the first point and click I ever played. Three Skulls of the Toltecs. Toltecs, yeah. It was on PC. Came in a big box that I lost, I guess, at some point. But that actually... This is actually... I never really talk about it. But this is really the game that got me into point and clicks. Sonic Adventure 2. And Sonic Adventure 1. Conker's Bad Fur Day on Xbox. That took me a while to find. Darkcraft 64 is actually... If I remember correctly, probably one of the most expensive games I have. Oh yeah, I had it in box. Yeah, the PAL version of this game runs actually pretty high. Last time I checked, the box and the game was like over a thousand. Oh, we have a little Donkey Kong Game & Watch. You had this? They're really expensive. Really? Bunch more PlayStation stuff. Croc! And Croc 2! And Dragon Ball! I hate how this is thrown in here, but... Skies of Arcadia on Dreamcast, the originals. Now I can put that next to my GameCube version. So Kim says she can see Amiibos and figurines in the next ones. I still haven't found my Earthbound. They did some kind of packing. They're not completely clueless. Okay, in this one, we have my figures, my collectibles. Apparently this wasn't in the box and it was loose. A lot of Dragon Ball stuff. Forgot I had that. Don't really care for Master System much. Don't know why I have that. Oh, there's a good. Oh. Find it? No, I forgot about all my Zelda stuff. So, Link to the Past, Four Swords on GBA. Zelda Skyward Sword. I know a lot of you don't like this game. I actually really liked it. When I bought this, I was really broke. It was literally the last of my money, and I only ate rice for a week after that until payday, because that's all I had in the cupboard. I literally spent all my money on that. Yeah, yeah. Phantom Hourglass. Not really too much of a fan of the... Uh... Four Swords on GameCube. Uh, we have some rarer stuff in here. The Collector's Edition. Damn, these are both in really nice shapes. Uh, the promo, the, the promo, promo disc that has four classic games has the master mode and a playable demo of Wind Waker, which is also right here. Um, my day one edition of Dead Rising 3, I was a day one backer of the Xbox One and I ended up selling that version. I know there's more Zelda stuff in here. Twilight Princess, Boxed Adventure of Link, the initial original Zelda, but for Famicom, the Famicom disc system. That's really cool. Zelda Ocarina of Time promo. Uh, this actually doesn't have the game in it. It has a poster folded up inside. You can only get it by like pre-ordering in Europe or something like that. A friend gave it to me. I think that's really, really hard to find. Spirit Tracks, another really average game. Zelda Ocarina of Time. Obviously, you guys know how I feel about that. The second Famicom Zelda game. I forgot I had that. I thought I only had the first one. The holographic... 64 version of Majora's Mask. This was the first game I ever bought in the States and I bought it from Scott Squatch at his house the second I walked in the door for $15. Good deal. Good deals all around as Aaron Kosharski would say. Sexy Pal edition. None of that NTSC stuff. The Famicom edition. 
Uh, the American edition, uh, the gold cart, and then the Japanese cart of Ocarina of Time. We've got to be getting close to the end of the Zelda stuff. The original for NES with a manual and another Zelda manual. Uh, Zelda DX for Game Boy, underrated. A little Zelda guy. Monopoly. Actually, that was a birthday present from Michael. Thank you, Michael. Uh, some Amiibos, my NES. My gold Mario, which I lined up for at Target one morning. How was that guy? My uh, original Zelda, which I cheated and opened and scraped out the bottom so that you could still use it while it was in its box. A little, a little hack tip for you. And Silver Mario. I didn't know I had Silver Mario. There's more Amiibos, I think, in the next tub. I know I had more than that. Another Zelda promo uh, GameCube disc. My half a chip hazard, which is pretty much how he looked at the end of the movie, so that's about accurate. My little pony. I'm not sure why I have that. that this is full now of... Uh, Pretty much toys, figures, Jack Skellington, but a lot of, a lot of uh, Dragon Ball stuff. I have unwillingly, unknowingly, unintentionally, I guess, saved the tub I was most excited for until last. If this doesn't have my damn Earthbound, I'm not gonna lie, my body's getting old. Ugh. This is kind of a struggle. This tub is a Nintendo tub, so this is the place you want to be. We're talking NES, we're talking Game Boy, we're talking GameCube, we're talking hopefully SNES. Looks like I put some filler titles on top so I won't bother going in. There it is. This is the one, man. This is, this is the one game that I was like, why didn't I take that with me? It would have been so easy to take with me. It's my favorite Super Nintendo game. I never really truly knew if I would see this stuff again. I, I was hoping I would. So I ended up taking a lot of stuff with me that I wouldn't want to lose. And for some reason, I left that one. There it is. <laughs> Action 52. One of the only games that Game Chasers really made me want for no reason other than to own a really terrible game. Do you know about this? It has 52 terrible games. Most of them don't even work worth a lot of money that was really that might be it that might be the most exciting thing uh there's a lot of gamecube stuff in here as well as a bunch of um playstation and mario party 4 uh smash bros melee i'm gonna just get some of the coolest stuff uh dark cloud 2 pokemon coliseum i really like that game gotta love some metroid prime gotta love some resident evil the bottom of this box is full of nes games like mega man 3 I thought I had more Super Nintendo. Oh, Super Mario RPG, that's a good. I'm exhausted. It's 2 a.m. We have to somehow pack all this stuff up. Right now I'm exhausted. Mentally, physically, emotionally, everythingly. It's been, it's been rough trying to get a hold of this stuff. I said I was gonna go through the process and uh, I, at this point, I'm just gonna keep it short and sweet because it, it's gonna take too long. But there's this company called Pack and Send Bendigo and uh, I've got my stuff, I guess. So at the least there's that. I don't know if some stuff did fall out. So I probably can't complain too much, but they told me that it had to go to New Orleans because that was the only port close to me by water. It's their company. So I was like, sure, yeah, send it to New Orleans, right? It gets there, they call me and they're like, and by the way, it took like two months to get there. It got delayed at the LA border for forever because they had to go. And that was a whole nother thing. The way they shipped it was wrong and we had to get it changed to Kim's name. So we got it changed to her name. That was a whole thing. We had to pay fees on top of it because it, it changed a personal effects shipment to a Kim was buying things shipment. So she had to pay, we had to pay taxes on my games as if we were buying it to sell it. Anyway, it gets delayed. It finally gets to New Orleans. New Orleans is like, why is it here? Because it was delayed because it was in Texas. So it was sat in Texas for like, who knows, a week, two weeks, a month. I could have gone and got it. But no, it went to New Orleans. So then I had to call New Orleans at somewhere else in New Orleans to go pick it up from the location. I had to pay for that place to bring it to back to Texas from New Orleans. That cost $800. I also had to pay the place they picked it up from 
a fee so they could actually pick it up so that another service could come and pick it up makes no freaking sense to me but that's what i had to do and i had to spend two days on the phone with these people trying to figure out how to get it to me because they thought i was a business trying to sell something not an individual human being trying to get his stuff from australia so i was having to go through all these loopholes i had to talk to corporate i had to talk to some guy named todd working in the freaking the garage where this thing was kept so he could like get it released and sent to me anyway it finally gets here to fort worth like two months later after spending hundreds and hundreds and thousands and thousands and extra fees I walk in and when they wheeled it out on the forklift, everything on the bottom was broken. And when the forklift let go of it, the bottom container split and everything fell out onto the ground. I'm lucky actually that that was the time everything broke and spilled out and it wasn't any other time. There was a massive crack in the bottom of the tub, so stuff did fall out at some point. But hey, cost a lot. It was frustrating to get it here. I had to jump through so many hoops. But it's here, and I have my Earthbound. And there is so much stuff that we don't even know what to do with it now. We need a new house. We already needed a new house, and this is overkill. Guys, this has been my, hopefully, biggest pickup video ever, so that I can call the video that. And it's, it's just kind of weird. These are the same tubs that I packed it in three or four years ago. The same tubs. It's like I'm... It's like I'm complete in a weird way. Remember to subscribe if you enjoyed whatever this video was. Watch this video next. Why not? I'm really exhausted. <laughs> so I'll see you guys in the next video.